gives you several tools and controls to edit your photos. The last lesson started to introduce you to the tools and controls that are available to you in Lightroom. In this lesson, we're going to continue exploring the right panel group. You'll learn even more ways to edit and adjust your images while working in Lightroom. We'll discuss working in the basic panel, using the radial filter tool, saving effects as presets, creating virtual copies of your images for editing purposes, using the graduated filter tool, using the adjustment brush tool, adjusting colors in your images, and more. As we said in the last lesson, you'll start with the top panel and the right panel group and work your way down as you edit and adjust your images. We're going to start in the basic panel as we discuss more ways to make changes to pictures. The basic panel is comprised of different sliders. These sliders make adjusting the color and tonal range of your images easy. To adjust exposure in an image, drag the exposure slider in the basic panel. Look at the histogram panel as you do to see the effects the changes have on the curve. Next, drag the contrast slider. You can watch the histogram panel again. We can take a look at the changes we've made by going to before and after view. Go ahead and experiment with shadows and highlights as well as the other adjustments by dragging their respective sliders. Experiment until your image looks the way that you want. The radial filter tool allows you to apply vignette effects to your images. You can also use it to create elliptical masks. To use it, click the radial filter tool. It's located below the histogram. Drag an ellipse onto your image. You can use the handles to resize the ellipse. Use the black dot in the center to drag and move the ellipse. Now go ahead and make the adjustments you want by using the sliders. Press Shift-M to deactivate the tool. If you're following along in Lightroom as you complete the course, chances are you spent a lot of time adjusting the sliders in the section where we talked about the basic panel. You did this so you could achieve exactly the effect that you want. The good news is that you can take those settings and create a preset so that you can quickly and easily apply those adjustments to other images as well. Here's how to do it. In Loop View, make sure the image that has the settings you want to save is displayed in the Work area. Go to Develop, New Preset. You'll then see the Settings dialog box. Enter a name for the new preset. Then make sure that the adjustments you made that you want to save have check marks beside them. When you're finished, click the Create button. Your new preset is now listed in the Presets panel. To apply the preset to another image, select an image in the film strip. Then click on the preset in the Presets panel. If you want to work on an image and experiment with new changes, but don't want to destroy the change you have already made, you can do this by creating a virtual copy. You can make all the changes you want to a virtual copy. If you like the changes, you can save the virtual copy as your main catalog copy. However, if you don't, your main copy stays as you left it. To create a virtual copy, go back to the library module and go to Grid View. Right-click on the image, then select Virtual Copy from the context menu. In the film strip, a virtual copy has a page peel or dog ear in the bottom left-hand corner. To delete a virtual copy, or any image for that matter, right-click on it in the film strip and then select Remove Photo. Using the Tone Curve panel, you can adjust contrast in different parts of the tonal range. To see how it works, go to the Navigator window and change the Zoom to Fit. Now go to the Point Curve menu in the Tone Curve panel. Try all three menu options to get a feel for the effect each has on the image. But for this example, let's go with Medium Contrast. If you look at the panel, you can see a light version of the histogram in the display. This will help tell you where you need to increase contrast. Move your mouse over the display. The region your mouse is over is highlighted. So far, we've talked about the image as a whole. 
However, you can also edit the tonal range for certain parts of the image. You can also go to the display and drag on the target button, which is the little circle, to adjust the tonal range. Look at your image as you do this. You can see what region you're adjusting. The graduated filter tool allows you to create a gradient mask so that an adjustment is stronger in one area, but then fades. To do this, go to the histogram panel and click on the graduated filter. Make sure new is selected. Now drag diagonally across your image. Then adjust the settings using the sliders. To change the angle of the gradient, hover your mouse near the pin or the black dot. You'll see a two-way arrow. Drag to change the angle of the gradient. You can also drag the pin in order to make the gradient larger or smaller. Click the Done button on the bottom right of the work area when you're finished. The Adjustment Brush tool is used to edit different areas of your image by painting adjustments. To use it, click on the Adjustment tool in the histogram panel. When you do, the controls will appear below it. Set the mask to New. It should be set as this by default. Next, adjust the sliders. Set the size of your brush and put a check mark beside Auto Mask so that Lightroom will detect the edge of any area you paint and mask the parts of the image that fall outside of that area. As I paint the grass in the image, you can see that it gets darker. Press K when you're ready to disable the brush. Each pixel in your image has a color. The color of each pixel can be expressed as an RGB, or red, green, and blue value, or as hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is the actual color of the pixel. For example, it could be blue, red, yellow, and the list goes on. The saturation is the intensity of a hue. If you look at this color wheel, the less saturated colors are closer to the center. These colors are usually neutral, grayed, or muted. Luminance is the brightness of a color. Underexposed pictures or black images have a minimum value of luminance, whereas overexposed pictures or white images have a maximum value of luminance. Let's use luminance to lighten the sky in this picture. We can do this by increasing the luminance. Here's how. Make sure you're in the develop mode and set the zoom level to fit in the navigation panel. Now go to the HSL color black and white panel in the right panel group. Click on HSL in the header of the panel, and then click All. Now click the Target tool to the left of Luminance. Make sure you're in Loop View, and then click on the sky, but don't let go of your mouse button. Drag upwards to increase the luminance. Click the Done button at the bottom right of the work area when you're finished. Click on the Before and After view to show the difference. To turn one of your color images to black and white, go to the HSL Color Black and White panel and click on Black and White in the header. Your image is automatically converted to black and white, but you can use the sliders to manually adjust the color if you want. You can also use the Adjustment Target tool to adjust the black and white mix in different areas of the image. To do this, click on the Target button. Drag upwards on an area in the image to lighten and downward to darken. Split toning is not nearly as complex as it sounds. When you apply a split toning effect to an image, you replace dark tones or shadows with shades of color. You replace lighter tones or highlights with tints of another color. Let's see how it works. Make sure you're in loop view and then right click on the image. Select Settings, Lightroom BW Toned Presets, Split Tone 2 from the context menu. Our black and white image now looks like this. 
Now you can go to the panel group and use the sliders to adjust the color if you want. You can also use the basic as well as the tone and curve panels. You can take the settings from one image and apply them to multiple images. To do that, select an image in the film strip that you've applied effects or settings to, then also select a few other images that you have not yet edited. Remember to control click or command click to select multiple images. Next, click the sync button that's located below the right panel group. You'll then see the synchronize setting dialog box. Check off the effects and or settings that you want to sync and then click the synchronize button. You'll notice that all of the images that you selected now have that effect applied to it in grid view. To remove distortions such as fisheye that can be caused by a camera lens, go to the lens correction panel and then click on the manual tab. Now drag the sliders beneath transform to see the changes it makes to your image. To correct the perspective in an image, go to the basic tab in the lens correction panel. Put a check mark beside Enable Profile Corrections. Under Upright, click Level, Vertical, and Full to see how they change the perspective of your image. To adjust the perspective automatically, click Auto. The Detail panel is where you'll go for sharpening images and removing noise. As with the other panels in the Develop mode, you can adjust the sliders to sharpen your image or reduce the noise. The Effects panel lets you add a post-crop vignette or grain effect to your images. Let's create a post-crop vignette. To create a post-crop vignette effect, adjust the sliders until you reach your desired effect. 